Hi, my name is Brett Jones, and in this video, I'm going to discuss the motivation science behind student engagement and give you some strategies that you can use to motivate students in medical and healthcare courses. Now, this lecture is going to be based on the music model of motivation, where music is an acronym that refers to these five components. Now, researchers over decades have found that these five components are critical to student motivation. My contribution is combining all of these ideas into one model to help instructors design instruction. This model can be used with any type of instruction, lecture or problem-based learning or any type in between. And it makes complicated research ideas easier for practitioners to understand. How does the music model work? Well, it all centers around students' perceptions in a course. These perceptions are affected by external variables, such as instructors' teaching strategies and other environmental conditions, such as students' friends, family, the society, the culture in which they live, as well as their internal variables, like their cognition, affect, needs, and identity. These internal variables interact with external variables to affect students' perceptions in a course. And these perceptions then affect students' motivation in a course, which affects their engagement. Now, this is important because ultimately it affects the outcomes, such as learning and performance, which is ultimately what most instructors want to affect. This cycles back and impacts students' external and internal variables. Now, your course isn't the only thing going on in students' lives. They also have uh, hobbies and family, and so they're going to be motivated to do those things too. So they're going to be engaging in these cost benefit decisions to try to decide are they going to engage in your course or these other things. So as an instructor, you only have control over so much, but it's quite a bit and instructors do have a pretty big impact on uh, students' perceptions of these music components. Um, now you might say, that's great, Dr. Jones. This is a nice little model. So what? Well, we have um, done research now in a lot of different countries. And as you can see here, we have 16 journal articles that show just how students' perceptions of these five things are distinct. They're separate. So as a result, you can affect each one of these five things. Um, probably what's most important for you all um, are maybe these five studies where um, researchers found that the music model uh, could be used with medical students in New Zealand. I didn't have anything to do with that study. <laughs> Some other researchers in the United States looked at how the model could be used with uh, pharmacy students. I didn't have anything to do with that study. Um, and then there was two other studies where we looked at um, in psychology clinics in Denmark, um, Canada, Japan, and the United States, and we found that it could be used there. So here's just uh, four studies that I just mentioned that relate directly to the health um, care fields. Um, and one other thing I wanted to mention is that these factors do affect course and student rating. They're very highly correlated with those. So if you want to improve your course rating, these perceptions will also help you with that. So what strategies can you use if you want to improve your instruction? Well, instructors need to ensure that students feel empowered by having the ability to make decisions about some aspects of their learning. For example, you could give students choices within class and within assignments. For example, allowing students to choose their own groups for labs or other sessions. And this is just one example. Um, I don't have a lot of time to go into a lot of detail today. Um, for usefulness, instructors need to ensure that students understand why what they're learning is useful for their goals. So for example, explaining the purpose of all the assignments, incorporating clinical cases into lectures could be seen as useful. Asking guest presenters like practitioners to come in and share the reasons why they find this content useful in their practices. Instructors also need to ensure that students believe they can succeed if they put forth the effort. Now for, for these, um, providing tips for how to study in this course could be important. Sure, students have studied a lot over their life, but what can be done in this particular course to help them? providing summary or study guides, such as a tree graphs of bacteria, things like that could be useful to students, uh, or remediation sessions covering common themes missed on exams, 
providing clear expectations and instructions, and providing frequent feedback, maybe providing practice problems or optional weekly quizzes or ways for students to figure out whether they can succeed in the class. Instructors also need to ensure that students are interested in the content and instructional activities. So for example, design instruction that catches and holds their attention, especially during lecture, this is critical. Um, using novelty and surprising information can work. Uh, researchers have found that using variety, maybe video clips of certain diseases, but mixing things up any way you can, can increase interest. The pace of your lesson, you don't wanna to be too slow, you don't wanna to be too fast. Um, and stimulating their emotions, you showing enthusiasm, but maybe giving emotional case studies or something to, get, to arouse students' emotional um, engagement in the content. And finally, instructors need to ensure that students believe that others in the learning environment care about their learning and about them as a person. Um, when that happens, uh, students see you as caring, uh, they see you as approachable and relatable. Uh, you could encourage students to ask questions, obviously. Um, but being respectful of students, respect is an important part of this component. Also increasing positive interaction among students, right? Fostering an atmosphere of inclusivity and addressing students who are condescending. I'm sure you don't have any students like that, but they are out there. <laughs> um, now, how do you use the model to design a course? Well, I don't have a lot of time today to get into the details, but one resource I wanted to tell you about was at the website here. The user guide has specific questions that you can ask students to get feedback. And these are validated um, instruments in here. And so, for example, the inventory um, has items like I had options and how to achieve the goals of the course. The coursework was useful to me. I could succeed in the coursework. The coursework was interesting and the, the instructor cares about how well I did. So you can take the scores from these questions and then you know, look at them and see where you're low. Now here's an example from one of my classes. Um, and you can also look at your course rating and instructor rating. What I ended up doing in one class was targeting usefulness and interest, even though usefulness was fairly high. I wanted to in increase both of these. And the green shows what happens after I did an intervention. The red was before, the semester before. So you can look each semester and see if you're improving or whether the changes that you made had an impact. Here I could see that the green scores went up, which shows that what I did had an impact on their perceptions, which was also reflected in the course and instructor ratings here, which you also see went up which was great. Um, in collecting data, I also encourage people to ask open-ended items. So for example, for usefulness, what could be changed in this course to make it more useful for you? I encourage people to ask questions in all five areas of the music model, and this will give you some great feedback of things you can do. Now you might say, well, aren't these components obvious? Come on, Dr. Jones, it, everybody knows about these things. Yeah, yeah, well, it's true. Um, you know, people who have thought about this, these things are fairly obvious, but <laughs> the music model reminds you that you have to do them, right? We can't just say these things are important. You have to remember them and you have to do them and you have to be intentional about implementing them. Um, and if things aren't working, you can use motivation science. You can fall back and say, am I doing things that, you know, fit into these five things? And if not, what could I improve? And importantly, these music perceptions can be assessed so you can find out from students what they think about these things. Now you can talk to students about these five things, but you can also give them uh, questionnaires and you can do other things to find out what students think about uh, these perceptions, which then you can change and improve upon. For more information about this, I do have a book that has strategies and a lot more examples about how um, to implement the music model in, um, in courses and I have information at my website here, themusicmodel.com, and you can also feel free to email me if you have any questions. So I hope this was helpful to you and that you will use the mod music model in your teaching and uh, good luck with your teaching.